Good morning, church. Good morning, morning, afternoon, evening, midnight to those on the internet, whenever you catch this. All right, the the sermon that I titled, um, I titled it uh, Carefree Children of God. And uh, I just want to point out that uh, this month we started off... um, I started off with a sermon called uh, Covenant Freedom, and then Mel followed it with Freedom to Serve, and Mel gave you more of a biblical thing of what I was trying to say, and I really appreciate that. And then last week we had Michael Moore, and he was talking to us about what's actually going on in Israel. And... um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention something he said in the sermon, but I, I like that he brought out something that I've known for a long time, and that is the national media will spin what's going on overseas the way they want you to hear it. They will, and I've known that for years, so because I do ministry and, and I've heard things and I know what missionaries say and I know what missionaries say when they get to the state side what doesn't get said or how they say it, you know, so. And this morning I'm gonna talk about carefree children, right? So I was born in a free nation. The only reason why this nation is free is because of the gospel. <laughs> I believe this is why this nation exists is because of what the church has done and because of church history and what people have learned about having a state church where the state and the church is is, is pretty much the same thing and, and how the evil can corrupt that. I, um, I started my pastorate five years ago in a free country and I want to continue to be in a free country and I want kids to grow up in a free country. And... Um, America is there's no other there's no other country like it and there's never been a country like it. It has its problems. We'll talk about that. But what 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 where in life do you go when there's no problems? You know, and as a preacher of the gospel, I'll tell you what the problem is. It's called sin. We've been preaching it for 2000 years. It's sin. Sin makes everything terrible, you know. So so I thought I'd, I'd go ahead and title this Carefree. I want carefree children. Amen? Amen. We're getting ready to gear up for the VBS. Yeah. And that is so important. And I'll tell you why here in one minute. In Matthew 9, 37. Let's, let's read that all together. It says, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but him who sent me. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you came into this world and you gave us instructions. And you let us know who you are and what you want from us. And Lord, you backed up every word that you said when you went to that cross. And we thank you for that. Lord, I thank you that your spirit breathed out this word so we, so we have it this morning. And I ask that your spirit will lead this sermon. Lord, I thank you for the time of study and everything that I know. <clears throat> and I pray, Lord, that it all comes together to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, <clears throat> yeah, allergies and smoke in the air is really messing with me, but I'll be all right. Here we go. So let's look at that verse again. Whoever receives one of these little children in my name. All right. Where it says my name, put my VBS. You guys see Put it there. Receives in my name. It's his VBS. It's not Christian chapels. Amen. Receives me. Why 
do we trouble ourselves as a church to get a VBS ready? You guys know it's a lot of work. I'll try not to look at Robin. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of it's it's a lot of time. And it it, it can get chaotic and it and it can get just just more time consuming than anything. Why do we do this? Because this church wants Jesus. You guys see that in the scripture? It goes right along with why do you visit people in jail? Because I want to go talk to Jesus. <laughs> you know, it, it, it goes along with a lot of things that Jesus says. Why do we trouble ourselves? Because Jesus would have us do this. What this verse is getting at is that disciples of Christ are to have no reserve about being great. If you read the context that this comes out of, children understand that they are, they are not great. They understand that they, they need to do what their parents say, the authority says, and they are learning things as they grow. But they have no delusions of greatness. And that's what Jesus was really getting at here. To know that one is, is as low as a servant in this time in history or as a child is getting the idea of what it is to be God's child. Amen? All right. Kids have to rely on adults to provide everything for them, which means they have a degree of faith that we don't have. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Children, right, have to trust somebody. Now, you guys are probably thinking, there's a hundred ways I can go with this. Yeah, there is. I can talk about all sorts of injustice, and I will touch on some of that here in a bit. Let's go ahead and go to the next verse. In my Bible, it's on the next page, so I, I planned it that way. I thought that, that was cool. I'll just go over to the, just look to the next page. But here it is, Mark 10, 14 through 15. Jesus didn't stop talking about kids. I think he really wants the church to pay attention to kids, right? But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. Let me stop there. Why is Jesus mad at his disciples? This is the only gospel that talks about this. This accounts in the other two, but... This one, he says that he is greatly displeased. He was greatly displeased and said to them, our verse today, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Jesus is disappointed with the church when we see kids as a problem. I learned real quick, being a pastor, that if something gets messed up because there were kids in the church, yeah, it needs to be cleaned up, but it's a good thing because there's kids in the church. Amen? Amen. I, the Holy Spirit dealt with me real quick, and I, and I, I came to my sentence, sen senses, you know, Duh. If you want to continue to run a church, John, and, you know, get paid, <laughs> you should probably keep raising up generations, amen? <laughs> Job security. All right. Anyways, I'll get off that. But anyways, yeah. But yes, yes, Jesus is disappointed with the church when they're like, these are a problem. These are a problem. These are problems here. You know what? They're not a problem. They are the next generation of, of, of men and women of God that we are going to raise up that have to combat the lies of this world that the public schools are putting on them right now. I won't even go into that because i got all sorts of other horrible things to go into. But that's one of them. That's one thing. Children... Get this, children will joyfully receive a gift without any se second thought about what, about how it came to them. Now, as an adult, somebody hands me a gift, I'm wondering, 
What are you doing? What do you want? Kids don't do that. Is there strings attached to this? You know? But kids will receive. You give them a popsicle, they're like, cool popsicle, yay! And they'll, and they'll celebrate and praise. You know? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to get to their faith here in a second, right? They'll just celebrate and praise and have it and enjoy it and, and devour it, right? They'll do it, all right, yeah, yeah. All right. They'll, they'll joyfully receive anything. Jesus wants this kind of faith and trust in his disciples and in his church. All right. Let's look at verse 15, and I'm going to get to a point here. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Now, there is one thing we can learn from kids, all right? Now, I'm not into that whole thing, well, they're young and they're free, you know, like teenagers and young adults, so they got it all figured out. No, they don't. They don't know anything. But when it comes to kids, there's one thing that they can constantly remind us about the kingdom of God. And that is how they trust God and how they trust their parents. To be in the kingdom of God is to understand that we need God as much as kids need their parents. I'll touch on it. <laughs> There's something I didn't want to touch on, but I feel, I feel like maybe I should. There are people right now who are, who are starting to go so far with, with uh, vaccines that they're starting to push, and they don't understand you're in a free country and this is, this is not freedom, but they're starting to push push them to the point where they're saying if people don't take them, we should take their kids. You're not in America anymore. <laughs> um, they should really research how this country came about, freedom of religion, HEPA, and the American Disability Act. They should look into these things. FYI. More on that at another time, amen? All right, going on. Why is the, the faith of a child so precious? The precious of a child's faith. About 20 years ago, I was listening to uh, the Calvary Chapel uh, radio program, and they had a Bible teacher. And he was talking on these same verses, and he said something that stuck with me for all these years. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. So I'm going to share that now. What he was saying is, you know, parents with little kids, you can try this if you want to. I don't, I don't suggest it, but you could. You could go home, open up your fridge, start taking all the food out of the fridge and throwing it into the trash. Throw it out of the house. You can open up your cupboards and take all the food and just throw it out. And your kids will still gather around the table expecting something to eat. Kids don't understand the circumstance of what is happening. They'll sit down in faith, ready to eat. If they have a second thought about it, like, well, maybe they're going to go get me a Happy Meal. You know? But they, they know you're going you're gonna to feed them. They have that type of faith. Now let's take this to... Being in a Pentecostal church, what if it's a bad report about your health? Are you going to trust God to be the healer? What if, it, what if you don't see the money there? Are you going to trust God that your bills are going to get paid? And here's one. If there's nothing in your cupboard, are you going to trust God that you're going to have your daily bread? Are you? I probably won't. I'll probably be pretty upset. I'll probably be pretty mad and say some things to God. <laughs> I'll be like, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world happened? And then I'll go over to my parents. I know they'll feed me, so yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> anyways, yeah, but, but anyways, moving on. 
But yeah, there, there are things that we can learn from kids, right? There's, there, there's that one thing we can learn is how they have faith and trust. Now, the gospel always has to go along with the bad news. You guys ready for the bad news? All right, I'll try to move through it quickly. Let's go to the next verse. 1 Peter 5.8. Church, be sober. Be vigilant. He's talking to the church. He's talking to us here. It's not necessarily talking to the kids coloring right now, but he's talking to us. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He didn't say destroy. He didn't say kill, which, you know, if you're going to eat something, you, you kill it. He said devour. Interesting word. God wants us to watch out for the helpless and the defensive, defenseless kids in our society because the devil wants to devour them. All right? I can't tell you how many times as a pastor who has the love of God in his heart, I cringe when I see girls that don't even come up to my hip running around at a big intersection completely vulnerable to anyone and everyone who wants to do anything to them at that moment it just cringes me and i tell you what church i found myself praying and just pleading the blood over them because i'm like god that's your daughter and i start praying for them like they're my own like i would if i knew my daughter was out there in that situation and it is unreal how much people don't understand how evil this world is and what the dangers are really are out there. It just cringes me. I have a neighbor, and um, his wife, her dad, stayed with him for a while back because he he he. He builds things. He, he can redo things. And they were redoing the floors in their house. And his name was Jeff. And the most friendliest guy I've ever met. But when he found out that I was a pastor, he wanted to talk to me. And um, with tears in his eyes, and the way he had respect for who I am, even though he doesn't go to church anymore. You guys catch that? He doesn't go to church anymore. Told me about a daughter that he had where they had a, the plans of the, of the kid was understood. She was going to be in one location, and then she was going to walk back to the house and be in that location. Fifteen years ago, she never came home. pain in his eyes as he told me about this. You know, you don't just get over something like that. And the respect he still had for me, even though, obviously, faith was very much well shooken in God, he told me about this. And then I kind of noticed his family as I got to know him. They invited me over for the 4th of July so we can blow up the sky. I kind of noticed that his family's kind of half and half into church, but not really, you know, and I kind of figured it out. One side of the family still sends, sends their kids, but they don't go. The other is completely worldly now, and, I, and, and it's like it all clicked, and I got it. I went, okay. Good place for the pastor to be, right? Yeah. Be a representative of Jesus, you know. Well, another thing I've experienced in ministry as I was down in Belize, and there was a missionary in a Mayan, a Mayan village, and he told me about the cab drivers. <clears throat> These cab drivers would go into the village, and they would find the single mothers because all kids in that village had a single mother. They had a horrible 
thing that goes on here in the States happened repeatedly and very commonly that they would find a guy, they would get to know him, they would have a kid together, and the father would get. As soon as they had a child together, the men in that village suffer from a certain stupid sin that, oh, well, all the fun and game's over, I'm out of here. So most, pretty much all, the villagers there had single mothers who raised kids. And they knew that eventually their boys were going to do the same thing to another woman. All right, so they had that going on, which is terrible. Then, come to find out that the cab drivers will come into Bellapan and they will babysit their young daughters. And they will pay the mother, mothers money to take their young daughters and give them money that they need to survive and live. And then as they watch these kids, these young daughters, they would take them to the cruise ships that were at ports and they would take them to U.S. American men and you can guess what they were there for. Right. Right. Going on. My experience in Kenya. I was standing there. I noticed these girls that were coming from a, a school. They were all dressed in their school uniforms. They were tweeners. And I'm standing there. And they walk by me and he he he. He's super white, you know, and, you know, yeah, I am. And uh, next thing I know, this woman named Anne comes up. And she can't speak English. But she grabs two of these girls and has them translate for her the sexual acts that she wants to perform for me because she's a prostitute. And I'm standing there in horror because these girls... You can tell they're struggling with saying what it is because it's all, you know, corrupting them to translate to them about what her business is and what her proposals are for me. I stood there horrified. Never experienced anything like that in my life. Then I wised up, I, it came to me, and I started telling those girls, tell her how much Jesus loves her. Amen. So I started putting the gospel back through. But these are tweeners. They, they don't need to know this stuff, they, but they do. That was my own personal experience. I have a friend, her name's Deborah. She lives in this town, but when she lived in Albuquerque, her job was to take evidence and pictures of crime scenes and put them together put everything together and file it away and, and have it all on you know have all have it all on databases and all that and she said you know i would sit there at my desk and i look at these horrible graphic pictures of crime scenes and i would read about the kids that were involved and she goes at the end of the day i always wondered what happened to those kids how are they doing? What is going on with them? I'm going to talk about two more people, and I'll bring this sermon to a close. One day I was sitting at home, and I was watching a certain program. And i got to be careful about the key words I say so we don't lose the platform on our internet just to mention it. So I was watching this. It's either the weather or this uh, program. It's about the war on information. And uh, the, the lead host of it, his, name's, his last name's Jones. And... Um, and uh, Mr. Jones was talking about how he has an uncle who worked in intelligence. I don't remember if it was military intelligence, federal, CIA, whatever. And uh, he was asking him, 
well, what is, it, what is it that you do? What is it all about? And he said to them, and this stuck with me, at the end of the day, it's about children. So this man, his name's Alex, said this on my TV, and that stuck with me. At the end of the day, it's about children. Church, I think at the end of our day, it should be about children. Every person on every level of intelligence and law enforcement that are good and they love Jesus like we do, at the end of their day, it's about children. At the end of their day, as they have to deal with horrible things, what's on their mind? The children that are involved. Now, the next person I'm going to mention is the rapper Lecrae. Now, Lecrae has some things that are, you know, he has some points and views that are, you know, a little more liberal than, than, than what I, I have. And him and uh, Mr. Jones here would have a very interesting conversation on immigration because he's, he's more on one side than, than the other. But, you know, there's two things they agree on. It's two things. One, who Jesus is. And two, we should watch for kids. They both agree on that. And I like, I like Lecrae because he's really good at what he does. His, uh, um, his last two albums before his latest one is like some of the best stuff he's put out. It's just really good stuff. But All Things Work Together album, I, I, that's probably his best album, and when it plays through my iPod, it goes into what's called Church Close 3, and then there's a song that starts off, and it's called Freedom. Now, it's appropriate title because it goes along with everything I've been saying all month. It goes along with everything that Mel has brought up. It goes along with everything that Michael Moore, when he was here from Chosen Pe People's Ministries, and let, was letting you know, you don't get the whole truth. You don't know the whole truth of things, and if you did, you would do something. If, the, if you did, you would say something. Well, here's the lyrics from the, the song Freedom. It's, it's ironic. I'll just clue you in. Starts off, they're out here prostituting kiddos. Fill their pockets full of dineros. Pedophiles pitiful. Sell a child to the centerfold, take their innocence, put it on the internet. Oh, by the way, you know he's a Christian, right? This is a Christian rapper. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's showing us something we need to know. Purity tainted, dignity shaken, enslaving the souls of all these babies. And freedom's got a price nobody's paying. Making money? Now check this out. Is this happening in another country? Yeah, it's happening in other countries, but check out what he says here. Making money, American dream, ain't it? He's talking about the ghetto. He's talking about things we don't know. He's talking about inner city stuff. This isn't third world country. This is happening in America. Is it the American dream to make money? His, his last response here is no. Jesus said, let the children come to me because he knew how evil this world is. I won't go into you about what the Romans and Greeks did to kids. It's, it's just, oh, well, I don't know. Listen to the sermon again. Same stuff. I'll just leave it there. All right. He knew how evil this world is and, he, and how we need, as a, as a church, need to stand up for righteousness. Why do we stand for righteousness? Because it stops the sin cycle. When people, I'll just put it this way, when people get perverted, they're going to touch kids. Somebody will. Sin cycle keeps going. It doesn't stop until the blood of Jesus applies. Amen? All right. We stand up for righteousness to protect kids because we want carefree children of God. Amen? Amen.
Now that's where I planned on ending this sermon. You guys want some good news? Oh, Lord, give us some good news. Give us some good news. All right. Why does your pastor go through the neighborhood and sweat to death and put out hundreds of flyers for VBS? Why is that a chore I like to do? I, I, I like it. It's, it's free exercise. It's, yeah. And, um, and I get to sweat. It's great. You know, there's kids in the neighborhood back here that we reached two years ago for VBS. They're excited. I got to talk to them. They're ecstatic. Church, I want to end this sermon with this. We're doing our job. The pandemic didn't stop it. There's, there's two boys up here in this neighborhood. They're ready. They're ready to come back. There's a whole family back there over on the Emporia Street. They're ready. They're excited. We did it, church. We're doing it. Praise God. Praise God. We're actually reaching the neighborhood we're in. Isn't that awesome? Let us continue to be the light in this dark. <laughs> I won't go back into it, but this dark, evil world. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, people of the internet, I'm going to pray for us, Amen. pray for yourself.